a bit of background about health seekers. So why did we set out to create a, a Facebook health game? Uh, well, first off, you know, probably all of you at this point, or most of you are on Facebook, and you're a pretty uh, good representation of what's out there. It's, it's a huge country. If it were a physical space, it would be one of the biggest countries in the world, about more than 500 million active users. Uh, the average Facebook user has about 130 friends. You know, how many people are above this, this level in the audience? You know, so roughly a third of everyone here. More than 30% of users are 45 plus years old, so, which is an interesting evolution because Facebook, as some of you may know, started as a college-based uh, social network. But uh, nevertheless, if you start to look at what's happened on the Facebook game space, you know, a very interesting story starts to emerge, which is um, if you take the 10 most popular Facebook games, there's over 200 million at monthly active users. So this is actually a huge and fast growing, even faster than Facebook itself segment within social media and within Facebook itself. And ultimately, and perhaps very surprising for well, most of you, at least it was for me when I first learned about it, is the average age of a, of a Facebook uh, game player. It's a, about 43 years old, and it's a woman. So it's not your hardcore gamer sitting in a dark room, sort of like a dungeon, not coming out for days at a time and being all smelly. It's, it's, it's a woman, you know, and it's, it's in her, her middle age, having children, you know, and having a career or not. But uh, that is because we're talking about social games, not games per se as uh, some of uh, us may think about them. So HealthSeeker, we, uh, for those of you who care to uh, check it out, I'd love uh, for you to do so. It's at healthseekergame.org. That URL takes you into the Facebook page where you can you know, start playing the game. We launched it in mid-June, mid coinciding with the American Diabetes Association conference in uh, Orlando. Uh, as, as far as I could tell, it, it was the first sort of like social game taking place uh, on Facebook focused on health. And although we, uh, it, it, it clearly, you know, having been uh, created content-wise and, and, and uh, um, concept-wise by two diabetes nonprofits, you know, ourselves at the Diabetes Hands Foundation and Justin Diabetes Center, it has a clear focus and benefit for people who have diabetes, but the overall goal does not, you know, is equally appealing for anyone who um, is seeking to just get healthier. What, what are we seeking to do? To basically make developing and or rediscovering healthy habits something that can be done socially and in a fun way. Since we launched, we have attained approximately uh, 3,400 players as of today. And uh, if you care to follow HealthSeeker on Twitter, that's the handle, HealthSeekerFB. So how does, how does HealthSeeker work? Uh, when you first come to HealthSeeker, you, are, you have four overarching you know, lifestyle goals that you can choose to pursue. Uh, you can either work to get your weight under control. You can uh, seek to uh, better manage your diabetes. You can seek to uh, improve your eating habits. And you can seek to uh, reduce cardiovascular risk. Under each of those umbrellas, and sometimes overlapping those goals, there's a number of missions that you can take on. Uh, all these missions, the concept, and you'll see some screens that Michael will walk us through, uh, all those missions are built by choosing from actions. And a very important concept is that these actions are not like life transforming in themselves. They're not gonna make you healthier, the healthiest person tomorrow. They're gonna make you, they're gonna allow you to take a small step today and tomorrow and then the day after. So small things that you can go back and do in your life and then come back and report on them within the game. Once you complete those uh, actions associated with the game, you move on to the next level or choose a different mission. Feedback we have gotten from some players. I'm gonna read in case it's not easy to uh, read from the back. Learning about healthy life choices was never so interesting and fun. It's all about the baby steps. One important concept in the game that we were seeking, which may sound as counterintuitive, uh, but, but it was instrumental, is that we're not seeking to keep the person attached to Facebook, you know, uh, and you know, they're already doing it anyway, so we're actually trying to provide people with useful, usable, and actionable things that they can do in their lives and report back on the game. Uh, other comments kind of go along the lines of this, basically, you know, for the first time, and actually, 
uh, fun or other people would say an actually useful uh, Facebook game. Not that Farmville isn't a lot of fun, but uh, certainly you know trading cows or cattle uh, doesn't really translate into much in real life. We had the opportunity last month to present at the American Association of Diabetes Educators in, in San Antonio. And uh, these were some of the, this is some of the feedback we got from diabetes educators. These are folks that are directly in the front line working with diabetes patients on a day-to-day -day basis. So for educators who are struggling to help patients integrate behavior change, Health Seeker will be a great, a great tool. Why? Because people are on Facebook already. I mean, that, and that's one instrumental difference. Uh, you're not necessarily like sending them off to a new place, but rather acknowledging the fact that they spend sometimes an inordinate amount of times on Facebook and trying to present them with something that will make uh, things, uh, will make them hopefully healthier uh, people. So very clever. It's a great that the game gives patients examples of specific behaviors to focus on. They need that. Again, all actions within the missions are very specific, very tangible, switch from white to wheat bread for a week. Uh, Ch try to choose uh, lower sodium. Uh, you know, if you go and buy peanuts, try to go for the half, uh, you know, 50% uh, salt or unsalted. So very specific things that you can go about and implement. I like how the game involves peer support and even support from a significant other. It's a way for the family to get and stay healthy too. Another key element about the game is the participation of your Facebook friends. They become sort of a support network as opposed to you participating in a social network, say like Two Diabetes or patients like me, where the entire network is your support network. On HealthSeeker, your support network is your uh, network of friends who choose to play Health Seeker along with you and can track, give you kudos, um, you know, and join in the game along with you. Well, so let me move on and let uh, Michael uh, walk you through some of the specific uh, screens and then we'll get any questions. Sounds good. So, um, so I'll admit to feeling a little bit out of place here being a game designer at, um, at an e-patient conference. Usually I'm at a conference full of uh, gamers or internet people. Um, but you could make me feel more comfortable by, by a show of hands. How many people here live in their basement? <laughs> Nobody? Wow, tough crowd. Um, yeah, usually I, I make some joke about not having a girlfriend at this point and it breaks the ice, but <laughs> now I'm feeling more nervous than ever. Um, uh, so, you know, we thought this was a really interesting challenge to take on as a, as a game company. You know, we make social games and, and you know, social games, I think, um, you know, one of the, um, you know, one of the sort of inside secrets about, the, about our space, and we often say this to each other at game development conferences, is our job really is to sell people back their brain chemistry. You know, what we do is we give them things to do, simple things, pushing buttons, and then we make them feel really, really good about doing those really simple things. Um, there's really not much to most of these games. You take a look at, at a game like you know, Zynga's Mafia Wars or one of our games like City of Ash, um, you know, which are typical for the genre. Um, they're basically just button pushers. You know, they're like a little Skinner box or something. And um, we're just making you feel good about having done that. Um, we really look forward to the opportunity to use this power for good, <laughs> to, right? to get people to do things, and those things are good for them. Um, improve their lives and the lives of the people around them. Um, and, uh, um, you know, in particular, so, well, uh, Jane McGonigal had this great quote, which I, which I really like. She said, reality is broken, but game designers can fix it. And I really like that quote because it puts finger on precisely what we're trying to do with this game, which is you have this problem that you have this long-term goal, this long-term benefit that you're trying to get, which is you're trying to get healthier. And, but you have to take a series of short-term actions. And the individual benefit for each one of those actions is tiny. Insignificant, really. Why would I not put sugar in this particular cup of coffee? I'm gonna drink 1,000, 10,000 cups of coffee in my life, and why does this one matter? Well, it doesn't really, but that's the opportunity we have as a game design company, is to make that one cup of coffee matter, make that one action that somebody does matter. And that's really the principle behind the game design and something I'd like you to keep in mind while we're taking a look at it. So um, Manny already said, uh, talked about missions. Missions are kind of the core of the, of 
the individual's gameplay. I'm going to get to the social features a little bit later, because to me, that's where all kind of all the really interesting juice happens in the game. But, um, um, but, uh, but the missions are kind of uh, the key to the individual's gameplay. So you have, um, you take on a mission. You say you want to, um, you want to increase the amount of fiber in, in your diet. The game recommends to you a series of actions, and you pick three of them. Each one is just an individual action. Um, uh, choose, uh, choose a bread that's got three, three grams of fiber. Um, sprinkle nuts on, on your food. Simple, little things. And we re the game rewards you when you take those actions by giving you, giving you points. It's a really simple achievement-based system. And the more that you complete missions, the more quickly you level up. And so uh, uh, players can choose from the, the roster of missions, the ones that matter the most to them. We, it's a lot of individual choice in the game. We're not trying to, and certainly as game designers, we're not trying to tell people how, how to be healthy. The, the health-related content um, wasn't uh, prepared by us. But our job is to make that content more engaging by presenting it in a way that people will be able to engage with it. They'll be able to feel the value of progressing through the individual actions and, and, um, and you know, get the dopamine rush that comes from having clicked on the right button at the right time. But clicking on the button in this case is um, eating, some healthy, uh, um, eating some healthy fiber. You see um, they have a list of completed missions. And as they complete missions, um, they're like, they proceed towards their lifestyle goals. This is not a very good screenshot because it doesn't show their lifestyle goals advancing. But um, you would see your lifestyle goals um, progress. You have a list of suggested missions. Um, and you can see which of your friends are playing the games along with you. So here is um, here's where the, the social features of the game sort of kick in. And this is something really interesting that we found. So that Manny sees that Cheryl is playing the game means that Manny will take on more missions. It's an interesting fact of the game that people who have um, received a notification from another player in the game of something that they've done, they on average have twice as many completed actions than someone who has not received such a notification. So we found that, in fact, while you know, the gameplay and the button pushing is really important, knowing that other people are there with you turns out to be kind of a key motivator of behavior and a key way to keep people engaged in the game. Um, we have a leaderboard where you can see your friends as they're playing the game, as they're moving forward. Again, this is simple, you know, fundamental game design stuff. It's not even very fancy looking, but it turns out to be pretty impactful in terms of how people perceive the game, how they perceive themselves to be part of a living system that's, um, that's moving forward. And they receive badges. Again, simple game design, but um, as we looked around, we found that most um, diet and exercise tools were boring and, and ugly. <laughs> And they didn't really give you badges that you could share to put on your Facebook profile, ways of just simply acknowledging that you did something healthy this morning and that that's good, isn't it? Shouldn't I get a, a pink heart? <laughs> I mean, I give my kids a pink heart when they finish their <laughs> assignments in school. Why shouldn't I get one? Um, and then um, and we aggregate the actions of all the people that play the games together into what we call the list of collective achievements. So you can see here, as of the time that we took this particular screenshot, um, which is early on in the life of the game. Um, people have completed 1,100 missions, 5,200 healthy meals, and so on. And you get a sense of how, um, how everybody together is collectively becoming more healthy. Um, the, just, and just to give you a, a couple more uh, interesting stats. So we have, um, it wasn't in the screenshots here, but each time I take on um, a mission, I can challenge one of my friends to take that mission with me. So we have, we have found, as we ran the statistics over the last couple of weeks on the current crop of players, that it's that challenge mechanism that actually turns out to be the very most powerful um, uh, in motivator of behavior. Somebody who sends a challenge, regardless of whether or not that challenge is ever received on by or acted by anybody, somebody who sends a challenge has, on average, twice as many completed actions and twice as many active missions as somebody who does not send a message. Somebody who receives a challenge, even if they don't accept that particular challenge, even if they, don't accept, even if they have zero accepted challenges, if they are somebody who is receiving a challenge, they are just slightly less, they have slightly less, just about um, 1.7 times as many active missions, completed missions, as somebody who's received no challenges. So it's the perception of other people and the support of your community that turns out to be the real powerful motivator of behavior. And we were expecting to see an effect like that in the game, but it was even more pronounced than we expected. 
And so, you know, in a lot of ways, it turns out that Health Seeker is one of the more social games we've ever made, where the presence of other people in the game is truly meaningful. It's not just a way of getting, freeing a sheep, <laughs> a free, a, uh, uh, freeing a sheep from my pretend farm, but actually making an impact on somebody else's life by sending them a challenge, I can feel confident that I'm actually helping them become more healthy in the game, and that turns out to really matter to our players.